I would say I would definitely make a distinction and say that humans have always done cosmology, meaning that we've always wanted to understand our origins, you know, even going right back to creation stories or creation myths, you know. I would say that, um, I would go as far as saying the Adam and Eve story, how that started in the beginning, you know, the earth was without, you know, um, form and, and we were in this void, I forget the exact um, statement of that, but um, so we've always been doing cosmology. I would say that Cosmology is now a branch, is ba basically a branch of physics, of the physical sciences um, that um, correlates or looks at phenomenon that physics or the everyday physics that, that we study and in a sense applies that to the whole, to the universe as a whole. And, in, in, you know, and as we do that, we learn that we can actually account for a lot of things such as how stars and galaxies and planets are sort of formed um, on larger scales, but we also learn new physics. We also we can use cos this by looking at the universe as a whole and the largest distances we can imagine. We can learn something about the smallest things here, like you know, like atomic physics, particle physics, um, physics of the sub in the sub nuclear domain. So. It really is, the f cosmology is a physics that connects the smallest things in the universe to the largest things in the universe. With quantum gravity, um, you can break this up into actually the title of this particular theoretical framework, um, the word loop. And when you think of loop, you literally think of a hula hoop. Think of that shape, so you have a hula hoop. And I can imagine linking a bunch, bunch of those hula hoops together and making, you know, some sort of fabric of hula hoops um, when I look from far away. So that's the loop part. Quantum, of, of course, is quantum, as in quanta discrete quantum mechanics. That, you know, one of the things we learn from quantum mechanics is that how the electron actually occupies the itself in the hydrogen atom is through quantized positions and energy levels discrete jumps in positions and energy levels. Um, that's sort of, you know, um, of course, a very bastardized way of um, talking about quantum mechanics, but that's one way we can think about it. So that's a quantum part. And the most important part about loop quantum gravity is the gravity part. So really what loop quantum gravity is, is a theory of quantum gravity, of unifying quantum mechanics that's been so successful um, and most of our technology, for example, uses quantum mechanics um, with the other successful paradigm of physics, which is Einstein's theory of general relativity, um, having to do with matter and energy being able to warp the very fabric of space and time. And loop quantum gravity, um, another, th if you now, another way of combining the quantum with the gravity part, now that I, I gave you the Einsteinian view that the fabric of space-time could be warped. Now imagine you say, okay, therefore, I have an atom of space and time. So let's for forget the time part now. But I have an atom, a pe piece of space that appears to be continuous um, on large scales, distant scales. But when I actually go to very, very small scales, how small, put 34 zeros um, in front of a centimeter, okay, decimal points. And we're talking about that distance scale, okay? So-called the Planck distance scale. We actually start seeing that space, the fabric of space, comes in atomistic chunks, just like the atom, uh, like the hydrogen atom, was a quantum, became a quantum entity. Um, so we move from this continuous description to, of space and time to atomistic description of space and time, and that's, and the loops are th themselves the. The, if you want to think of them, uh, are the objects, okay, that, you know, when they link up together, those are the atomistic objects, in a sense, of, of the fabric of space, time. And when they link up together, there is some sort of weave, a fabric that I see, just like you look at my shirt. It seems to be smooth, but when I go in, right, I actually see the fabric of the threads that, that link up together. In that case, it'll be the hula hoops of the fabric of space and time. The one weird concept of loop quantum that I think is pretty cool is that 
the loops themselves define space. So in other words, if I give you a loop in loop quantum gravity, space only exists in the loop. But outside the loop, there's no space. So loop quantum gra gravity also incorporates the idea of there being no space. Empty space is still something in loop quantum gravity, but there is actually a notion of no space. How does loop quantum gravity compare to string theory? Um, is very much actually an active role, I mean, active um, um, line of research for some people right now, in that they are trying to connect or think of ways in which string theory um, and loop quantum gravity um, could actually be unified, not unified, but related to each other. Because right as it stands right now, there are different pictures, so to speak, um, of, of quantum gravity, of how you marry quantum physics with gravity, how you link space-time, the arena that matter works, um, moves in, with actually ma um, quantum mechanics, which does so well describe in matter. So um, they differ in a sense. Uh, one way to contrast them is that string theory is based on a form of matter in a sense that we that we you know that is string-like rather than point-like, like atomistic. So you take matter. I don't want to cut my finger up, but um, use that as an example. But yeah, I can divide my the molecules of my finger down to the Planck length. String theory says when I get to that length scale, that atomistic point actually resolves itself to be a string-like vibration of, of energy. And depending on the different vibrational frequencies or how the string rotates maybe, all right, or how it wraps onto itself, I get the appearance of different types of matter. But it's a theory really of fundamentally of matter moving in space-time. So in a sense we call that a background dependent formulation of quantum gravity versus loop quantum gravity which doesn't require a background space-time, it itself defines the background. String theory is a theory that starts out positing a form, a string-like form of matter, but that string-like form of matter propagates or moves in a background space-time. Um, now in loop quantum gravity, there is no background space-time. It's the loops themselves that define the background space-time. Because there can, outside of these loops, okay, there is no space-time. So loop quantum gravity is said to be a relational theory. It, if I depend on how I link these uh, loops, quantum loops of space-time together, um, will give me space-time relationships. Okay? So in that, that's more the so-called Leibniz Leibnizian viewpoint of space-time, that it's relational. Distance is nothing more than, you know, um, is the, not just about some space in between you, but a sense of farness and nearness. That's a relationship. And so loop quantum gravity takes the, to that viewpoint where it doesn't require a background space-time, which was one of the fundamental postulates of Einstein's theory of general relativity, that the laws of physics should, be in, should not care about the positions or the background space-time um, that an observer, say like you and I or a planet, um, is situated. They should be invariant under one's state of motion or position. Where string theory starts out with that as an assumption, and then they can actually get gravity back from that assumption. So that's um, the way, one way in which they're different.